We touched upon damping in a previous section in the Introduction to Dynamics. In this section, we will formally introduce damping and illustrate the concept of damping through two examples. In the following sections, we'll explore the fundamentals and the application of damping. Finally, we will wrap up with a summary. Damping in the context of vibration tends to reduce the magnitude of the vibration. This happens because of the dissipation of energy of the system in the form of heat, sound, or other forms of energies. Let's see how damping relates to something as common as an exercise treadmill. A treadmill will experience repeated loading from the runner or walker. This repeated loading will cause the treadmill to vibrate or bounce. This is considered a force vibration case. Now, depending on the magnitude, rate of the forcing applied, and the lack of damping, it may cause the treadmill to bounce excessively, induce unnecessary amounts of noise and vibration into the floor, or even start to migrate and move out of position. To limit these effects, engineers can provide damping to the treadmill by designing a vibration isolator. The isolator can reduce the unwanted effects providing comfort to the runner and effectively reducing the noise and vibration the treadmill would otherwise create. We can see how a pad of engineered materials absorbs the forces of the runner and treadmill. This type of damping is called material damping. A simplified simulation model of this system would be a spring mass damper system. The block represents the treadmill and its mass. The damper represents the rubber isolation pad we saw in the video. The damper is fixed on the bottom while the force represents the runner's feet is applied to the block. We now compare the response of the treadmill to two different amounts of damping, which would represent two different designs of the isolator pad or say even different materials used in their design. Notice how with high amounts of damping, we see smaller amplitudes of the treadmill vibration, and the vibration isolator is effectively working. Now let's see another example regarding damping. In this case, we will illustrate the concept using a guitar. How does damping affect the vibration of a guitar string? As we discussed, damping takes energy out of the system. So if we pluck a string with damping present, we'll expect the amplitude of the guitar string to decrease over time. We can hear this as the amplitude of the sound decreases, but we can also see it as the amplitude of the string vibration decreases. This is considered a free vibration case where we pluck the string just once and the energy that goes into the string does not repeat and it decays. Now what types of physical damping is present? There is material damping in the string itself and also viscous damping due to the string vibrating in a viscous fluid, in this case air. So how do we know how much damping to specify? Often it can be determined from a simple test and measuring the decay in the amplitude of the successive peaks. We will discuss this in more detail in the following sections.